Hi everyone. Welcome to Quality Food Safety 101. This is a second part of contamination video which will cover chemical and allergenic contamination. Physical contamination has been covered in the first part. So let's start. So next in our series is the chemical contamination. Chemicals are never good in food. Pesticides, cleaning chemicals, these are some of the very basic things which we need to control and do not allow to come in food. So what is chemical contamination? Entry of any hazardous chemical in the food is chemical contamination. Now another interesting thing to remember is there are some chemicals which are allowed in food industry in certain limit. So let's suppose if you purchase any water bottle, a mineral water bottle, you will see that on the label there is a list of minerals which are mentioned and they are with the quantities that let's suppose calcium, which is very good for bones, it has certain milligram per liter in the mineral water bottle. So let's suppose I am a company or a food handler and I thought okay calcium is good why not give more to people so instead of for example 5 milligram per liter I add 50 milligram per liter theoretically it's, it's good the intentions are good but it's a chemical contamination because I am exceeding the limit allowed by the regulatory bodies so anything additional from the limit also is chemical contamination and, and anything hazardous in the chemical category entering in the food is a chemical contamination. The sources of chemical contamination can be from raw material, packaging material, uh, from maintenance operatives like oil and grease, from cleaning chemicals, from pesticides and additives. Okay, additives are those chemicals which are allowed in the food industry like food colors for example but they are allowed in a certain quantity. So if you exceed the quantity, that's also a chemical contamination. Another example, if you look at this picture carefully, somebody stored chicken in old chemical container. Look at the label of this uh, container. It says super washing liquid. Imagine that, that the maintenance operative is spraying a, a chemical on the bearing and the food is next to it. It's strictly not allowed. Whenever we do maintenance activities or cleaning activities, the food should not be there. So what are the controls? Now, there's a whole list of controls which are mentioned on the, the screen for you. I'll just say some of them. Approved suppliers so that the chemical contamination from the supplier side is controlled. So let's suppose we have a farmer which is approved, which is using safe quantity of pesticides or even no pesticide like organic farmers. And in that case, that a food supplier will help you to control chemical contamination. Similarly, use of good chemicals for cleaning, which are food grade, which have which uh, which, which will come with proper MSDS and uh, with proper approvals from the authorities. Training of people who are using those chemicals. Approved pest contractors so that they use again reputable chemicals as well. And then some logical things cover the food as much as possible, do not clean and do maintenance during open food times, remove the food before pest control activities and after every cleaning and pest control activity there should be proper washing so that the food environment becomes free of contamination of chemicals and then we start the production of the food. And of course do not store chemicals along with the food oil. There should be segregated storage of chemicals and food. So the third and the last topic today is allergenic contamination. Allergenic contamination happens when a food comes in contact with an unwanted allergen. So let's suppose I am making custard and I am not supposed to add peanuts in them and by mistake somehow peanuts or residue of peanuts end up in the custard. It's an allergenic contamination of peanuts. And Allergy by itself is the immune response of our body and it happens when a allergen enters the body and my body is sensitive to it and in that case it will show a reaction. That reaction is called as allergenic reaction or allergy. Allergenic hazard is nowadays a very much increasing problem. A lot of people around the world are allergic to different food items. There's a list of common allergens which I will show you also. 
Anaphylaxis is a serious type of allergy which can even result into death of people because in anaphylaxis the swelling of the throat and the mouth happens and as a result the air passage or the air flow is disrupted and people can even become unconscious and it can be fatal as well. So it should not be taken lightly and allergenic hazard control should be applied properly. These are the symptoms of allergy. For example, eczema, itchy mouth, swelling of face, swelling of tongue, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, trouble in breathing, and in some cases, unconsciousness and diarrhea as well. And the top allergens are there. These are mollusks, egg, fish, lupin, soya, milk, peanuts, gluten, crustaceans like shellfishes, mustard, nuts, sesame, celery and sulfites. Any of these foods when come in contact with non-allergenic food items, it will be an allergenic contamination. How do we control this basically? How do we control the allergenic hazard? Number one thing is proper communication. There has to be clear communication between the customers and the food handlers. So when we are taking orders, we should ask the people that do you have an allergy? If so, please let us know. Secondly, if we are a retailer, we need to clearly display on the retail boxes that what are the allergens in this food item or what are the allergens in our production area so that everybody is informed about it and then people can make their choice whether they want to eat that food or not. Then second thing is to avoid contamination. For example, if you are a company having different types of allergens, make sure you label the storage areas for them. For example, if I have a gluten free flour for my specific bread which I am making, so I cannot allow it to mix it with gluten containing flour because gluten is allergen. So I need to have segregated storage areas, segregated production areas or at least segregated production timings so that we do cleaning after each batch. Proper labeling as I said is necessary to make sure that allergen contamination does not happen. Lastly, cleaning of the area to have proper controls is also mandatory. So this brings us to the end of our third video. In the next video, we'll talk about microbiological hazard on the whole, which contains microbiological contamination, multiplication and survival. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and stay in touch, stay safe, see you in the next one.